Hey guys, so in this video we're going to do a collision with motion problem with pendulums. So we're going to use the conservation of momentum equation, the conservation of energy equation, and in some cases a special pendulum equation that I've derived before for you guys. Um, and I'm actually going to show that equation again real quick. So some collision motion problems involving, involve pendulums. Yay, pendulums. All right, so let me show you the pendulum equation real quick. So pendulums are made of a, a bob, a mass at the bottom. Um, let's put a little M there. And then there is a string. This string is always going to be massless. Um, and it has a length L. Okay, and then the pendulum is then going to be hit by something and go up. Ends up over here somewhere. And this distance here is the height gained by the pendulum H. And what we want to do is we want to have a relationship between L, the length of the pendulum, H, the height gained, and the maximum angle that it makes with the vertical. When you have pendulum problems, the angle that matters is the angle with the vertical because the pendulum moves around the vertical axis like this. So to do that, remember, we draw a line here, and that's so that we form a little triangle. Okay. And then I'm going to write two expressions for this little segment here. One of those two expressions is going to be in terms of angles, in terms of trig, uh, trig functions. Now, this is the adjacent side of the angle. So this is going to be L cosine of theta. And you can just remember that on the pendulum equation, it's cosine that you have. Another expression I can write is if this is H, just this piece, and the whole thing is L, then this piece here is going to be L minus H. So these are the two expressions, L minus H and L cosine of theta. So let's put them together. It's the same, it's two expressions for the same piece. So I can say that L minus H equals L cosine of theta. This is the pendulum equation. This equation can be written um, in different ways. I'm going to write it where we have the H by itself. Um, I'm going to move it over here so that it becomes a positive. So it's going to be H equals L minus L cosine of theta. Here's another version. It's the same exact thing, except just written a little bit different, um, but it's the same equation. Okay? So that's the pendulum equation you need to know uh, for some of these problems. Let's do an example here real quick. The rest is pretty similar to what we've already done in terms of using momentum and um, uh, momentum and energy equations. So pendulum is constructed from a 40 kilogram block. So let me draw a little string here. And there is a 40 kilogram block um, and a light two meter long string. That's the length, length equals two meters. Now light means that it's massless. The strings will always be massless in these problems. The pendulum is at rest. So it has initial velocity V. Uh, pendulum, let's call pendulum the second object because there's going to be a bullet here that's the first object. So V2 um, before the collision, so V2A equals zero. Um, and then I have, it's at rest that it's equilibrium position. The equilibrium position of a pendulum is down here. So the picture looks like that. There's a bullet, mass one, 500 kilograms, uh, 500 grams, so 0.5 kilograms goes this way with a velocity V1A of 700 meters per second, okay? The beginning of the problem is A. It hits the pendulum and the pendulum is going to swing up this way. And we wanna know what is the maximum height that the pendulum will obtain. This height is always relative to the lowest point. Uh, and we wanna know what is this theta right here. So we wanna know H and we wanna know theta. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the little um, diagram that I like to draw showing that this problem has two parts. First, from points A to B, there is a collision, so we're going to use the momentum equation. And then from B to C, this piece here, there is a motion, so we're going to use the energy equation. The initial part of momentum is before the collision. So A is pre-collision. B is after the momentum, the final part of the momentum equation, which is the velocity after the collision, so post-collision. And C is the end. It's the end of the motion where the object stops. Okay. 
So I'm going to write an equation from A to B. Um, I'm going to write the momentum equation, m1 v1, m2 v2, m1 v1, m2 v2. This is from A to B. Okay, so that's the momentum equation. All right, and the second equation is going to be from B to C. And from B to C, there's motion. So I'm going to write an energy equation, which is going to be K plus U plus work non-conservative equals K plus U. And this is from B, so BB to C, CC. The final height I want is for the motion part. It's at the end of the second part of the problem. So what I'm looking for is actually HC. And this angle here is theta C. Okay, so if I want HC, HC is here because it has to do, um, this is the potential energy due to height, MGH, so that's where we're going to find it. Okay, so I'm going to start here. Now, is there a kinetic energy at point B? Point B is post-collision, and there's always kinetic energy right after the collision, so yes. What about potential energy? Potential energy will be zero, and that's because the pendulum is at its lowest point. Remember, with pendulums, even though the pendulum is not on the floor, what we do is we don't say that this is where zero is. We move the zero up because potential energy is relative to a reference point, and we make the reference point be here. So the lowest point of a pendulum is where we say H equals zero. So at the lowest point, there is no potential energy. Okay. Now, B is post-collision. The block just started moving, but it hasn't really gained any significant height yet, which is why we say the potential energy is zero. There's no work because there's no friction and you're not doing anything, you're just watching. The kinetic energy at point C is zero because the block stops at the end, right? So there's no kinetic energy because at the highest point, it stops. And there is potential energy because you've gained some height. So let's, uh, let's expand this. This is gonna be half MVB squared and this is MGHC. Now, HC is what we're looking for. Notice that the mass is canceled. So because the mass cancels, since the mass cancels, you don't have to know what the mass was. But let's talk about it because sometimes it won't cancel. And I want to point out to you that something different about this question is that the bullet comes in at 700, but the bullet actually emerges out of the block with 400. So the bullet sort of like keeps going here. So the velocity of object one after the collision, after the collision is B, is 400. The bullet doesn't stay lodged inside. So for the second part, which is the motion of the pendulum, the bullet is not in there. So you're only looking at the pendulum. So the mass here is only M1. I'm sorry. Um, the mass here is only M2, which is 40. Okay. However, it doesn't really matter because they cancel anyway, okay? All right, so I wanna find HC. HC is VB squared over 2G. And at this point, we can't make this any simpler. We're ready to plug in numbers, except that we don't have VB, right? You don't have VB, so we're gonna have to go get VB and then come back. So obviously, if we're stuck on the second equation, then it's because we have to go to the first equation. And in fact, you see that there's VBs right here. Okay, there's VBs right there. So let's look at this first equation. I have all the masses. Um, the initial velocity of the first bullet, I have it at 700. The initial velocity of the block before the collision is zero, it's not moving. And these final velocities here is what I want. Now, they're not, actually, I want one of them and I have the other, okay? I want one of them and I have the other. The velocity of the bullets after the collision is 400, so I have it. And this is actually what I want. I want that VB, okay? I want VB of the second object, don't confuse the two. That's what I want. I have everything else so I can solve. So let's start plugging stuff in. Um, so the first 
mass. Actually, let me just derive this with the letters and then we'll plug it in at the end. Sometimes your professor uh, might want you to do that. So M1 V1 A, um, I want this guy by itself, so I'm going to move everything out of the way, minus M1 V1 B equals M2 V2 B. Notice here that I have M1 and M1, so I can factor it out. I have M1 V1 A minus V1 B equals M2 V2 B. V2 B is what I want, so I'm going to divide both sides by M2. And V2 B, which is what I wanted right here, I can find by plugging in these numbers. Cool? So let's do that. Now we're ready to plug. We got all the numbers. V2 B is the first mass. Um, M1 is the bullet, which is 0.500. And M2 is the block, which is 40. And the difference of the velocities. The first velocity of the bullet is 700. It comes out with 400. And if you do this, I have it here, you get that this velocity is 3.75 meters per second. So the block gets hit and moves with 3.75. I can now plug this in here, and HC will be 3.75 squared divided by 2 times 9.8. And again, if you do this, you get that the height of C is 0.72 meters. Okay, 0.72 meters. That is the first answer, part A. So all of this was for part A. However, luckily, part B is very easy. Part B, I want, I want theta C, and we're just going to use the pendulum equation that I derived earlier. Okay? So um, H equals, actually, the first version of the equation is a little bit faster to work with for this particular question. L cosine of theta equals L minus H. I want theta. So I'm going to move L over here, okay? So I'm going to have cosine of theta equals L minus H divided by L. And theta becomes the arc cosine of L minus H divided by L. Make sure you calculate it in degrees. And it's going to be the arc cosine of L is 2 minus 0.72 divided by 2. Alright, and if you plug this into the calculator, you get that the angle is 50.2 degrees. Alright, so that's it for this one. Hopefully it makes sense. Let me know if you guys have any questions.